this week on Carolina All Out. Bears going up a tree. Bears, the dogs are chopping right now. Hey, cross this road here, now they're going down side the road to Bear. Walk down the road a long ways. We're in Pathkintang County on the first day of the second bear season, and we're going to be using dogs today. We're going to show you all about it right here on Carolina All Out. <laughs> crew is headed to Pascatank County to partake in an old Carolina tradition. <laughs> Meeting up with Carolina houndsman Wade Temple, Help! host Chris Douglas and friend Gus and Jimmy are about to traverse the thick, swampy underbrush in pursuit of black bear. A couple of dogs here. Well, dogs have jumped in here. We don't know what kind of bear that they're going to be bringing up this way. We're going to follow Butterbean down here and try to line up this road. This is classic hound hunting. You're lining up a road. You're lining up this block. You're going to try to keep anything that's trying to get out from going over to that side. There's a canal right over here. Deep water. Once it gets over that side, we just don't know. Here they go. Come. You know, I was born and raised in North Carolina. Hunted all my life. And hunting with dogs is just a part of our tradition and what we do. And when we set out to do this show, we said we weren't gonna shy away from what is legal in the state of North Carolina and especially traditions in North Carolina because it's very important to me and I think it's something that everyone should learn about. Uh, where we came from, a connection to our past, and the hound is definitely a connection to our past. Hunting with hounds is a tradition that has been around for centuries. The amount of work, time, and money put into training and raising these dogs is unparalleled. The cattle cleaner cut down on the flyers. We don't see many flyers do around. Keep a pack of dogs, or even one dog, five dogs, ten dogs. It's uh, 24/7. The Temple family are true houndsmen. Their history of raising and hunting with dogs goes back over 130 years. I think I'm probably very blessed to come out of a long line of hunters. I was taught by some of the best and I pass it on to another generation. If there was ever someone who knew the ins and outs of training a pack of hunting hounds, Wade and Doug Temple would be the ones to ask. So Mr. Right. Doug, how many years has your family been doing this? Oh, uh, over 100 years we've been bear hunting. Started out with your, your uh, grandfather. grandfather, and his name was uh, Cortez. Cortez right. Temple. Been bear hunting all the life. My grandfather, he bear hunted, and there's several books wrote about the Dismal Swamp, and he's mentioned in those about bear hunting in eastern North Carolina. We were probably raised poor. All we had was a pickup truck, and that was what we worked in, went to church in. I said that was the whole nine yards hunted in, everything else. Any, any big differences you've seen over the years from when you first got started in it to what it is today? Well, used to when we first started in here, like these roads wasn't here. You either had to go down the old railroad. They had railroads in here is what they done. You go down a railroad track, what you go down is what we headed the dogs on. And wasn't very many of them. You didn't have tracking collars or anything. You just had to listen to the dog. And a lot of times, every which direction the dog went, you'd set your compass and then They'd go out of here and you keep on going, and usually they would tree or bait a bear and you'd catch up with them. But 
sometimes if they turned, you know, or got windy, you'd be a week getting your dogs back. Pascatan County is one of the smallest counties in the state, named after the Pascatan River. The word Pascatan is derived from the Algonquian word Pascatanki, which means where the currents of the stream divide into forks. Pascatan County is considered one of the finger counties of northeastern North Carolina. Barely 16 feet above sea level at its highest point, the county is bordered by the Pascatank River to its east, the Great Dismal Swamp to its north, and the Albemarle Sound to its south. Vast farmland, well drained by the labyrinth of canals, bordered by dense timbered tracks and tidal creeks, makes this a perfect place for giant coastal bears to hide and grow. Carolina All Out is brought to you by the Dixie Deer Classic, the Carolina's premier sportsman's event. XGO, those who know, wear XGO. The NC Wildlife Resource Commission, conserving wildlife since 1947. Bigly Wiggly, celebrating 100 years. Farms and Land Realty, selling land is what we do. New Sports Shop, a Carolina tradition since 1953. We'll be right back with more Carolina All Out. At New Sport Shop in Kinston, we've got the gear. From our bodacious selection of fishing and camping gear to firearms, footwear, outdoor clothing, coolers, and sunglasses, <laughs> we've got you covered. Come discover our state-of-the-art indoor pistol and archery ranges and uncover unique gifts, jewelry, home decor items, and fashionable clothing inside the villager. We're New Sport Shop on the Highway 70 Bypass in Kinston. At Noose, we've got the gear. CVA's Acura Series, Agara Barrels for guaranteed accuracy, Nitride for guaranteed rust proofing, and a rifle guaranteed to be the best muzzle loader you've ever shot. CVA, it's just a better gun. He unfortunately did not make it. The fire chief says he was not wearing a life jacket. He was not wearing a life jacket. When he suffered a medical emergency, he was not wearing a life jacket at the time. Was not wearing a life jacket at the time he went overboard. His wife says she never saw him resurface. He was not wearing a life vest. CVA's Acura Series, Agara Barrels for guaranteed accuracy, Nitride for guaranteed rust proofing, and a rifle guaranteed to be the best muzzle loader you've ever shot. CVA, it's just a better gun. Carolina All Out host Chris Douglas and friend Gus and Jimmy have teamed up with Doug and Wade Temple looking for black bear. Houndsman blood has been running through the Temple's veins for well over a century. After several days with no luck, the team finally hears the sound they've been looking for. I'm walking and bathing right now, trying to get Gus a shot. Other than that, we're just waiting on him to come out or we go in. That music. Might not get everybody's blood going, but it gets mine. Going. And any houndsman out there that's watching this, you know what I'm talking about when you hear that. There's excitement to that. You know, being raised up in North Carolina, I've come to love the sound of the hound. 
It's called mountain music sometimes because it truly is music to people's ears who have specially put so much time and dedication into the hound. And they can tell by listening what is going on uh, with the hound at the time. They can tell if the hound is potentially moving, following a bear, if he's baying with the bear, darting in and out. There's a lot of things that really denote what is going on with that hound in his game um, to be able to speak with his voice and let you know what's going on. This is some tough, tough walking. I mean, you're coming through these thorns and these briars here. And although I got protective clothing, I don't think I got all over my hands and uh, now I guess my face. So uh, it's a lot of fun going through this, but it's rough, it's rough travel. Born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, Gus and Jimmy didn't start hunting until the age of 31. Since then, his love and passion for bow hunting has grown, and Gus began sharing his bow hunting adventures as host of Pursuit Channel's Live the Wildlife. What we got over here is a cub, the dogs of tree. He's moving up and down. He's trying to find his place to get, make his escape. Now, this we're not going to take this cub, of course. We're going to let him go and let him grow. But you kind of see how this whole thing works. Dogs are trailed up a bear. They jump them. They move as far as they care to, and then they're going to go up a tree if they can, or they're going to bay. They're going to bay up in thick brush to protect their rear end, protect their to protect their self, and, and so that's what you got. Now, this guy's moving around on the tree. He's eventually going to come down, and then it'll be another chase. On but we don't want to waste our time so much with this letting the dogs wear themselves out on this bear. We pick up the dogs and get them on another track. That's what bear hunting's all about. Saving you, saving your little ones for the future. Conservation. That's right. You let him down. I didn't. Yeah, he come down. History reveals that the use of dogs for hunting goes back to the very beginning of man. The use of hounds has become controversial in modern times as social norms have changed. People have become more urbanized and are less connected to outdoor pursuits. Anti-hunters and many non-hunters alike believe that using dogs for hunting is an unfair advantage for the hunter. And that wherever dogs are used for hunting, the success rate is 100%. This is not true, and many times the quarry that is being pursued can and will escape for a myriad of reasons, including poor setting conditions and the animal backtracking and crossing its own tracks. The dogs have come out of this block, and they're trying to decipher the track of the bear left. Now they're crossing canals, the water that you see on all sides here and coming up on the other side. So what the hunters are doing, trying to help the dogs find a physically see the track so they can help put the dogs on it. Because I tell you what, this is not a 100% game. Even though people think that hounds can just, uh, you know, smell, nothing can get away from them, they can. They can, they can cross over another scent. There's just all sorts of things, you know, sometimes the humidity and everything else has an effect on the scent. So uh, everybody's, it's all concerted effort. They're all getting out here, helping the dogs, so. We're just gonna sit back with the guys and enjoy the show. Carolina All Out is brought to you by the Dixie Deer Classic, the Carolina's premier sportsman's event. XGO, those who know where XGO. The NC Wildlife Resource Commission, conserving wildlife since 1947. Piggly Wiggly, celebrating 100 years. Farms and Land Realty, Selling land is what we do. New Sport Shop, a Carolina tradition since 1953. We'll be right back with more Carolina All Out. Do you love the outdoors of Carolina as much as we do? Get your official Carolina All Out gear at carolinaallout.com. 
Show your Carolina pride with our line of hats and T-shirts. Tag us on Facebook when you're wearing your CAO gear for a chance to be featured on our page. Show your love for the Carolina outdoors. Get your official Carolina all-out gear today. At New Sports Shop in Kinston, we've got the gear. From our bodacious selection of fishing and camping gear to firearms, footwear, outdoor clothing, coolers, and sunglasses, <laughs> we've got you covered. Come discover our state-of-the-art indoor pistol and archery ranges and uncover unique gifts, jewelry, home decor items, and fashionable clothing inside the villager. We're New Sports Shop on the Highway 70 Bypass in Kinston. At Noose, we've got the gear. Unfortunately, did not make it. The fire chief says he was not wearing a life jacket. He was not wearing a life jacket. When he suffered a medical emergency, he was not wearing a life jacket at the time. Was not wearing a life jacket at the time he went overboard. His wife says she never saw him resurface. He was not wearing a life vest. I'm Chris from New Sports Shop. Uh, today I want to talk to y'all about making a king rig. I like to use Gamagatsu treble hooks, size six, the AFW super strand wire, the Tsunami halo teasers, and I like to also like to use the Tsunami swivels because they're, they seem to be a little bit smaller profile and uh, a King Michael can be a little finicky. All you need is uh, take you a piece of the super strand wire, 18, 24 inches is all you need. I start with my treble hook. I run it down. I run my wire through my treble hook. I give it a wrap about eight, ten times. When you get it done, take your tag in of your wire back through the eye of your hook. When you pull it, it ain't coming unloose. Then. I just take my other treble hook, and if you ever look at a treble hook, you'll notice that uh, one side's flat, and the other side's got a little hump in it. Take your flat side of your treble hook, and run that wire right on through there, all the way down to your other hook. And you do the same thing with your last treble hook. You take your last treble hook, leave you a little bit of room. I try to normally do a little bit longer than my hand is wide. And then you just tie a very simple overhand knot. You pull your wire down, you get your height about right, and there you go. You take your top hook, hook it through the nose of your man Hayden or cigar minnow whatever you're using for your bait. You take your middle hook with the cable on the flat side, and you hook it right into the side of your bait there. That made this, you don't wanna get to the backbone if you're using a live bait. And you just let that other hook kinda dangle back there. And what that third hook right there will do, he's gonna catch him when he comes up there and tries to short strike it. On your front hook, you could also use a regular old J hook, but I like a treble hook. Then you just take your teaser, uh, chartreuse, pink, white, blue, white, all those colors work real good. And then you just top it off by tying your swivel at the top of it. Um, swivel, you just do a regular old knot, put your two or three loops in there, run it back through, tighten it down. 
the check says so. And that right there is a proven king rig. It'll catch them every time. If you want to find out more about tying this rig, come by New Sports Shop on Highway 70 East in Kinston. This morning, it. Yeah, it's good bear. That what you're looking for, Bill? I think so, man. There's a couple there, ain't there? Yeah, so After yeah. several yeah. close encounters with smaller yeah. bears, CAO host Chris yeah. Douglas, one accompanied one. by houndsman Wade Temple and friend Gus and Jimmy, have decided to change locations. He's taller than. Uh, He's bigger than that other one I seen this morning. That's right. Yeah, that's what I say. See how tall he is? He bent down. Trail cameras show several huge black bears in this area. Although the team has had no problem finding bears over the past few days, a truly huge North Carolina Bruin has so far eluded them. Well, we are turning into cavalry, so to speak. Dogs are have trailed that bear up, but now they've got him moving, so now they're going to turn in the other, other dogs. There's some young dogs in that, and that's part of the training process for, the, for these puppies. They look like grown dogs, but they're young. Dogs are on them. We worked our way into this path out in the middle of this block of woods. And it sounds like these dogs are running them, and I'm sure this bear's gonna come this way. You know, this is safety. Just starting to get away from them dogs. And the thing is, they're not really afraid. They're just being annoyed, especially if it's the big bear. So hopefully he works his way to this path. I can get a shot at him. Coming up on Carolina All Out. Carolina All Out is brought to you by the Dixie Deer Classic, the Carolina's premier sportsman's event, XGO, those who know where XGO, the NC Wildlife Resource Commission, conserving wildlife since 1947, Piggly Wiggly, celebrating 100 years, Farms and Land Realty, selling land is what we do, New Sports Shop, a Carolina tradition since 1953. We'll be right back with more Carolina All Out. the outdoors of Carolina as much as we do? Get your official Carolina All Out gear at carolinaallout.com. Show your Carolina pride with our line of hats and t-shirts. Tag us on Facebook when you're wearing your CAO gear for a chance to be featured on our page. Show your love for the Carolina outdoors. Get your official Carolina All Out gear today. At New Sports Shop in Kinston, we've got the gear. From our bodacious selection of fishing and camping gear to firearms, footwear, outdoor clothing, coolers, and sunglasses, <laughs> we've got you covered. Come discover our state-of-the-art indoor pistol and archery ranges and uncover unique gifts, jewelry, home decor items, and fashionable clothing inside the villager. We're New Sports Shop on the Highway 70 Bypass in Kinston. At Noose, we've got the gear. He unfortunately did not make it. The fire chief says he was not wearing a life jacket. He was not wearing a life jacket. When he suffered a medical emergency, he was not wearing a life jacket at the time. He was not wearing a life jacket at the time he went overboard. His wife says she never saw him resurface. He was not wearing a life vest. The Carolina All Out crew has had a rough few days in pursuit of black bear. The thick, swampy terrain has proven to be a challenge. Although host Chris Douglas and friend Gus and Jimmy have encountered several black bears, 
The perfect scenario has yet to present itself. pretty intense we just get down the road that pair come running out with them dogs we didn't have the bow out of the case <laughs> Gus is hoping to take his black bear with bow and broadhead and in order for an ethical and accurate shot things need to fall in place perfectly One shot down. <laughs> no, it's phenomenal. What a nice bear. I'm telling you what, uh, the, the dogs really worked hard on this one. And, you know, you can't say enough about Wade and Doug and, and the work that they go through to maintain a pack of hounds and to maintain properties like this and, and conserve these bears like that. It's, uh, it's really, uh, uh, I, I would say it's a crown jewel of North Carolina's conservation story. And that's the thing, we did get on some smaller bears yesterday and those bears we didn't take and nope. let them go. And every ounce of this meat is gonna be used, which is another plus, Yes. big plus down here. We've been eating bear. In fact, today I had my first bear rib, which was really good. Wasn't that really great? cool? Yes, it was. And uh, yeah, you know, when you watch these dogs work, I don't think people understand how much work is put into this. And they train these dogs all summer and put so much effort into this that, uh, you know, again, the dogs are really the star. Again, Chris, thank you, my friend, for getting me down here. And uh, right. it's a good time, bro. to do it again. All right, sounds great. You got to get this guy out of here. Kenny. Five eight and under club, bro. I'm five ten and three thousand. Oh man, come on, man, go with it, roll with it, Kenny. Right, we have the south and the north coming together with the accents. We understand each other. You see, this is what happens over time. We learn to understand each other. All we needed was a president from New York. Now, now, now everybody comes together. You know, sometimes I go with dwarf. You know, sometimes dwarf. I like that one. Or, or like, uh, what do you call us? A troll from under the bridge? Right. Aye! You know, jumps out with a with an axe and chops your leg off. That's to me. That's part of the experience. That's just what makes what we do great. I love it. I love it. Yeah. What he said. <laughs> <laughs> Daisy.